Hi, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and here I am with the Harrisville Designs for Chef Folding Loom, and I am about to start threading the heddles. This right here is the Jacob Finn Cross uh, yarn that I spun during Tour de Fleece for 2019. So it's been a while in the making. Now, unfortunately, I don't weave as much as I would like to. And there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, first of all, um, it, I'm spinning almost all of my yarn. And I guess that's probably the, the number one reason. And that should say a lot right there. So when I am spinning, in particular for really large projects like this one, it takes a lot to spin. I didn't estimate... I didn't actually count all of the yarn. I counted several skeins, then I weighed them and did a estimate. And it, it was pretty efficient based on the way I went, but I have roughly about 2,500 yards of yarn. I spun, oh, a couple pounds of fleece. And so uh, that's what I'm using here. And as you can imagine, since I'm like a person and not a machine <laughs> and I have other things to do with my time that to spend 2,500 yards of fleece uh, takes quite a bit of, of time. Uh, I didn't spend it all completely during tour de fleece. Some of it was started before, some of it was finished after. So somewhere I have a total of exactly how much of it I've spun during tour de fleece, but about, I'd say about a thousand yards of it was done then. Uh, so it just takes a while to spin that much fleece and I'm spinning it from fleece, not from roving, roving or top or anything like that. So I'm actually washing it, drying it, processing it to spin. So that, that takes a while. And that means that I'm not cranking out a bunch of projects uh, on any loom really. Cause even with the smaller looms, you know, 500 yards here and there, I'm still uh, doing all those steps. So it's not like I'm spinning, you know, wild and large amounts. Um, uh, all the time and going through projects weekly. So it, it takes a while. And I have all kind of other little projects I'm doing on the side too, as you can pretty much tell from my post. Uh, secondly, because on the four shaft loom, it's, it's not like a super giant loom. There are much, much larger looms, but still it's a fairly decent sized loom. And so I really don't have any space to set it up all of the time. And that's just the thing. So I can't do as much weaving as I'd like to because I have to prep the space and everything else anytime I want to weave. And really the third reason is because weaving is not the only thing I'm doing. I am spinning. I am knitting. I'm doing some other crafts. I'm working outside. I'm walking the dogs. Uh, so when you, you know, when you kind of divide your time between different activities, um, you know, there's really, uh, you know, it's kind of scattered. So what I'm doing the most of is actually spinning and all the other textile arts or any of the other crafts I do, the time gets divided between what's left over from that and what needs to happen in real life. So I would like to produce more woven items, but unless I start selling woven items and it becomes a full-time job. It's not really a, a possible thing for me. So you just kind of have to bear with like getting one or two weaving projects a year. And it's not that I'm not weaving. It's just that there's a lot going on. Okay. So anyway, um, here we are, what's on here. And I did the calculations for this warp and I put four yards of warp onto this. And you know what, when I first started out with this, I wanted to make a blanket and I was going to do it in double weave, but I've never done double weave before. And after some consideration, I didn't think it was a good idea to attempt double weave that I had never done before with such a large piece of fabric. So in this case, I'm going to cut this in half and seam it. And I'll put on something smaller to work with in order to uh, learn double weave. So there's about 900 yards or so of fabric on this loom. And I'm just about to start threading the heddles. 
I finally broke down after I don't know how many years I've had this moon and I got a head of hook last year, year before maybe. And I could not find that thing. I finally found it. So I'm going to try it with the head of hook and see how that that works. That makes it a little easier to thread. I did, I put it on back to front. I've been told that the Harrisville Designs loom, this folding one in particular, is designed to be threaded front to back. Uh, this piece actually drops down to the floor so that you can sit basically in the uh, heddles. But um, for me, tension wise, it's a lot easier for me to wind the warp on. I get better tension myself personally. So I wound it on the back beam first. And I used uh, strips of cardboard from the box that the mini blinds came in. And they fit nicely across. And I'm pretty comfortable with it. And for the most part, as you can see, well, you know, if I pull these guys down, they'll match. But for the most part, they all they kind of match fairly decently. So my tension is it's pretty good. I can tell my tension is pretty good. Uh, they're not all a bunch of different lamps. So I, I did pretty good with this warping it by myself. And so now I am going to drop the front beam so that I can sit directly in front of the heddles and put this on. I'm going to do my usual twill. Um, and this is a 1-3 twill. Could be a 3-1 twill. I have to look it up and see which one this refers to. But I'm just going to thread 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4. And I'm going to treadle 1-2-3-4. Um, as they say, I'm going to walk uh, the treadles. And I just have a basic twill pattern for this. And there's some reasoning behind that, but I can't remember it offhand. And then I'm just threading right through the 10 dent reed. Just plain and simple. All right, let me show you the process. So I realized what I said was that the front drops down so that you can be up against the heddles. And that's not what I meant to say. Actually, the back drops down so that you can be right up against the heddles. And that's what makes this loom designed for front to back warping as opposed to uh, back to front. Because you would tie on to the front cloth beam here and take it through and you would sit behind there with the back drop down and you would be right up on the heddles. So in this case, what prevents me from being right up on the heddles is this beam here. I'm just going to slide the camera back. Um, okay, so now you can see that a little better. Uh, there's a front beam here where it wraps, the cloth beam wraps around. So that I'm leaning over top of that hard beam as I am threading from back to front. Okay, so for me, that's not a terrible problem. Like I said, I prefer my tension better from back to front. So I'm willing to give up that comfort um, when I'm threading to have better tension, more even winding on my beam. What I could do is I could actually fold the loom back up. When I fold the loom back up, I have uh, notch marks over on the side and it shows that the loom folds up right about about here which would bring that front beam up here and I could actually access the uh, heddles better that way so that's an option or I'm just small enough that I could actually put a stool right over top of it and in this space and sit inside the space and get closer to the heddles so that's an option as well uh, but that just kind of gives you an idea of, of why when I say that. And you know what? I don't know if this goes for all Harrisville looms. But for these particular folding looms, that's why when people say that the loom is designed to be dressed front to back, that's exactly what they mean because it is easier to thread on that side. So that's something for consideration. Okay, now, so I am going to thread this into one, two, three, four. And so I, I have my shafts marked. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a little tiny 
tiny thing here, but it's marked as one. And when I first started out, I marked my pedals too, but I'm walking the pedal, walking the treadles. And so I don't really have to do that anymore. I, I pretty much know what direction they're going in. I am weaving from right to left. And I don't know why. It just felt natural for me to start from right to left. I don't know if it's the whole right-handed thing or I don't know. But that's just the way I do it. So I am threading from right to left because I am weaving from right to left, even though I'm treadling from left to right. Hmm. And that's how that goes. So I would count out my four. And what I try to do, uh, see, this is still, let's undo that. I need to make the adjustment for the height of this first treadle, but it can wait. Okay. So I just kind of slide out one, two, three, and four. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll set them up across here. I'll stagger them in groups one, two, three, four. And I don't even know if you can see that. Let me put a piece of paper behind that. Hang on one moment. All right, so we've got one, two, three, and four. And then I'll set up like a next set. And of course this would go faster, but the camera is in front of me. So and sometimes set that up right here. The camera's in front of me, so I'm not really reaching with both hands to do this. If I had both hands, this would be different. Okay, so. So I would have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Probably get two more passes of four over there in this, how the space lays out. And I would just thread one, two, three, four. Then I'd slap my group away. One, two, three, four, slap my group away. And then, you know, slide them away in groups of four. All the way till I get to the end. Now, there are 10, 11 bundles of 22. Because this is a 22 inch loom. So I have 220 threads. Um, and there are more than 220 heddles on this uh, on the shafts. I make sure of that. There are extra heddles for all sorts of reasons. One of the reasons is um, when you do twills, some of the, sometimes some of the twills, um, when you pass over and under on the sides, they don't always catch. And you can have uneven salvages. So what I did was I put extra heddles on the sides um, so that I can have extra threads. So what I would do is I would have two number ones over here because this one starts on one. And I don't even know what this is going to end up on here. I really should know by now, but I don't remember how it's going to end on this side. It might be a four. It might be a one. And I'm going to put two threads, two number ones in here. And I'm going to put them into the same um, space in the reed, but I'm going to give them different um, different, you know, eyes in the heddle here. So it will, it'll still be one, but it'll be two ones, two, three, four. 